start unit two with our polynomials. And I know the section heading says we're going to add and subtract, but before we can get there, let's get down some of the basics of what a polynomial is, some of the terms we're going to use to describe those polynomials, and some of the different forms we're going to use. So first of all, let's take a look at what standard form is with our polynomials. Standard form is how I'm going to want you to write your answers once we do start our adding and subtracting, and tomorrow we're going to look at some multiplying. Standard form is how I will want you to write your answer. Standard form is we put our answer in order. So we go in order, highest exponent to lowest exponent. And we'll get a little bit of practice with this before we start our adding and our subtracting. If you don't like highest and lowest, you could say biggest exponent to smallest exponent if you want to. If you like bigger and smaller, better than highest to lowest. And then the other piece we're going to define before we get into looking at some specific polynomials is what the degree of the polynomial is. The degree of the polynomial, super easy to find. It's just your highest exponent. Or if you like biggest exponent, highest, biggest, largest, whatever you'd like. So when we write our answers, we're going to put those in standard form. Highest exponent to lowest exponent. The degree, the degree is sometimes how we name our polynomials. And I want to make sure we're familiar with some of those names so we can refer to them and all be on the same page. Okay. So let's take a look at our first polynomial. Our first polynomial is, well, it's just a number. It's just a 10. So to put that in standard form, guys, it's just a 10. I can't do anything with it. I can't do anything else with it. It's just a 10. There's no exponents to look at. Number of terms, there's just one term there. It's just one number. So if we just have one term, what we refer to, that polynomial that just has one term, is a monomial. That prefix mono means one. So one term, we call it a monomial. Now, the degree of this one, it says the highest exponent. Those exponents that we're talking about are for a variable. Do I have any variables? No, I don't have any variables. So my degree for this one is actually a zero. It's the highest exponent, and I'm going to put an extra little thing with the degree there. It's the highest exponent for a variable. If you don't have any variables, your degree is considered a zero. It's the highest exponent for the variable. So then if we're naming this polynomial by the degree, this is what we just call a constant. And we've heard that phrase before. Constant refers to just a plain number. If there's no variable with it, it can't change. That 10 is going to remain constant. There's nothing there to change that 10. 10 is 10. All right, for our next one, we have a 4x. Not much I can do with that again for standard form. It's just a 4x. The number of terms we have, we again just have one. The 4 and the x together makes one term. One term again is just a monomial. You might be thinking, Miss Guy, why did we do two of that same thing in a row? The difference is we've got a variable in that second one. So since we have a variable, my degree will be different. The degree is the highest exponent for the variable. What's the exponent for my variable that I have there? The exponent on the x would be a what? It would be a 1, yeah. If my highest exponent is a 1, this is the type you guys are super familiar with, but you might not have ever recognized them as linear because of the highest exponent being 1. You guys recognize them as linear because when you graph them, you got a straight line. 
If my highest exponent for my variable is a 1, that's where we get our linear. That's why we have that straight line when we graph. That's how we can pick out we're going to have a straight line before we even graph it. All right, our third one. Now we get to kind of work with that standard form a little bit. We want to put the highest exponent first. So in this case, it's that x squared piece, but we have to take the negative 5 with it. Be very careful when you're rearranging things in standard form. You have to keep the sign the same. So if there's a negative in front of that 5x squared, the negative has to stay there when I move it to be first. And then the 7 is positive, so I'm going to put a plus 7. So when we start adding and subtracting in just a few minutes, when we write our final answer, we want to put it in that standard form. Highest exponent first, and then we'll work our way down. And we'll give you, <clears throat> as you look at our next three, you can tell we're going to get into more of that rearranging piece with standard form. Now the number of terms we have in this case, we have two terms. I can finally now talk more specifically about how we can tell what our terms are. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So the negative 5x squared, that's all one term. And then our 7 is our second term. So we have two terms. Anybody know a good prefix for 2? Your bicycle has two wheels. So a binomial has two terms. Now, binomial is something, it's a term that we're going to use quite a bit in this unit. So prefix bi means two. We've got two wheels on our bicycle. Binomial is going to be a term we refer to quite a bit in this unit. That's why we're taking some time to do a little bit of vocab before we get into the, hey, let's do that adding and subtracting stuff. Okay, so our degree on this one, what's our highest exponent with our variable? It is a 2. When it's a 2, it's called a quadratic. Quadratic is a term that we're going to start hearing a lot for the remainder of the trimester. Binomial is going to be a super important term for us, as is quadratic. So quadratic is our highest exponent is a 2. We're going to see that a lot in this unit and our next unit as well. All right, so what I want you to try out for me, actually, let's do one more. Let's do one more of these together. For our fourth one down, standard form, highest exponent to lowest. So I want to put the 2x to the third first followed by the 3x squared. Everything's positive in that case, so I don't have to worry about my signs. Again, our terms, our terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So we've got one, two terms. Two terms again, we have a binomial. Our degree in this one, highest exponent for our variable, highest exponent we have is a 3, and this one is referred to as a cubic. That one we won't work with so much in this course. When you guys get to Algebra 2, you'll work more with cubics. The highest we really go in Algebra 1 is we work with those quadratics with that highest exponent of 2, and that's where we're going to have a big focus this trimester. What I want you to do for me, guys, is go ahead... On the next one, try out the standard form, pick out how many terms you have, and tell me the degree. Now, if any of the names happen to fit, go ahead and fill in the names, but I don't expect that you would know the names at this point. So go ahead and try that out for that. All right, guys, let's see how we did. I get a lot of people right now raising their hand. Miss Golly, did I do it? Did I do it right? Let's see if we did it right. Standard form, we want to start with our highest exponent. So what should come first for us? That 2x to the second. 
It's positive 2x to the second, so it's going to stay positive. It doesn't inherit the negative sign because it's in the front. Whatever sign's in front is what we keep. All right, what's going to come next for us? The negative 2x. The negative 2x. So I need to make sure that that 2x stays negative. I'll be very honest, guys. That's the biggest mistake I see when it comes to standard form is not getting our sign to stay the same. So be careful on that. And then all we have left is the 5. How many terms we have? Remember, terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So how many terms do we have? Three. We got three. Anybody know a good prefix for three? Uh, trinomial. Yeah, trinomial. Hey, there we go. We even got the whole word. Now, I know I used bicycle for binomial. Tricycle has three wheels. So we think about our bikes, we can remember our prefixes. So a tricycle has three wheels. And then what is our highest exponent for our variable? It is a two. We already saw that name, guys. It's a quadratic. Yep, we already saw that name. All right, guys. I want you again for that last one. I know some of you already did as I walked around. I already saw you tried it. For that last one, try again. Standard form, number of terms, and the degree. You won't know the names for this one. We haven't come across these names yet. So just try those three boxes that I just kind of highlighted there for you. All right, guys, let's check this out. Highest exponent in this case, we've got a four. The three X to the fourth is positive, so it needs to stay that way. Next highest exponent is the three. Negative 4x to the third needs to stay negative. Double check yourself. Make sure it's a negative. 6x squared is positive. The 7 is negative. So check your answer very carefully with mine. Make sure you have the right signs. Make sure you have the right signs. How many terms we have? We're up to 4 this time. And once you hit 4, once you hit 4, we just use the prefix for many. It's a polynomial. We just use the prefix for many. Poly is a prefix for many. So the reason why we're going through these names is because as we work throughout this unit and our following units, you're going to hear a lot of these phrases. Our very next lesson, we're going to start talking a lot about binomials and trinomials. We're going to start talking a lot about quadratics. So a lot of these terms, it's not necessarily that on a test, I'm going to throw a chart like this at you and say, hey, name all these things. We need that common language. So when I say, hey, guys, we're going to multiply two binomials together today, you'll be like, oh, yeah, bi binomial two. Okay, two terms each. So it's just that common language piece that we need to establish today. Standard form, that's again going to be our expectation for our final answer. Highest degree is a 4, and this one we call a quartic. We call a quartic. So again, the big ones for us off this, binomial, trinomial, and quadratic are going to be the biggest ones we use a lot. So now you might be like, okay, Miss Golly, so this is all about polynomials. Polynomials, guys, can be something as simple as a monomial or adding, oops, trying to shorten this up for you. It can be just a monomial or adding or subtracting two or more monomials. And remember, those monomials, those are just our single terms. So a polynomial, everything you see in that first column, those are all polynomials. It can be just one term, or it can be adding and subtracting two or more terms. Again, I'm not going to test or quiz you on definitions, but we need that common language. So when I say, hey guys, we're gonna add these two binomials together, 
we're not hung up on binomial. Wait, what's that again? It's just that common language piece, okay? So let's get into our first operation with these polynomials. And you might have saw your sheet, you're like, Miss Kelly, why is there pictures on here? I want to talk about the first one with you, and I want to give you a chance to try a couple just with the picture piece. And then we'll put it together while we have the pictures there. All right, so in number one, we're going to assign a variable to each picture. So let's do F for our flowers. How many flowers do we have? We have six. So we have six flowers minus three plus how many, we'll call them mushrooms. How many mushrooms do we have? We have nine mushrooms. So let's do M for the mushrooms. And we have a plus seven. I can group things together that are the same. What can I put together of those four different terms? What can I actually combine? The seven and the negative three. Can I put the F and the M together? Are flowers and mushrooms the same thing? No. So I have to leave the six F. I have to just leave the nine M. Negative three, positive seven. I can combine those for a positive four. So what I want you to look at at the next two, let's do B for bunny, and let's do T for turtle, and we'll do, let's do Fs for the flowers in number three. So do that same idea as we did in number one. Assign each thing a variable. We just want that common one. Go through and see what you can combine. Simplify two and three. See what you can come up with. All right, so in number two, in number two, I just rewrote everything using the variables. I know some of you went ahead and grouped things together without rewriting it first, and that's okay. If we take a look at question number two, we can see that we have five total bunnies, we have six total turtles, and then we just have the number seven. The order you put those in, guys, we can't really worry about standard form because we've got different variables there. So don't worry about that so much. We have five bunnies, six turtles, and the number seven. Is there anything else I can put together up there to simplify that anymore? No, I can't. I'm kind of stuck. Now, in number three, we kind of up the game a little bit. What do I do with that six when it's in front of parentheses? Multiply. Anybody remember what that's called? It starts with a D. Distribute. Very good. All right, so we're going to distribute this. So we're going to have six flowers. Now this is the piece that I saw a lot of people missing when I walked around. I had a lot of people that had the six F, they had the six flowers, but some people still had a five written there after. When you distribute, guys, you have to go to everything inside those parentheses, so just be careful with that. All right, and then we have another three flowers attached to the end. So what can I put together to simplify that more, if anything? The six flowers and the three flowers for a total of nine flowers. Now, some of you might be like, Miss Kai, why do we do the pictures? Why don't you just throw the variables up there? Those pictures maybe confuse me a little bit. The reason why I did those pictures, guys, is because I want it to be very visual for you that we can only put together things that are the same. I can only put together things are the same. I couldn't group the flowers and mushrooms together and make a group of 15 flowers and mushrooms. They're not the same. I can't put them together. Bunnies and turtles are very different. I can't combine them into one group because they're different. So I wanted to do something that could make you visually see the difference between a 5B and a 6T or just the plain number 7. So giving you more of that visual piece. So now we move to something like question number four, and we're adding things together with just variables. I want you to try to picture that, hey, these are really different things. So when we have a Y and we have an X, those are two different things. Maybe they're yo-yos and xylophones. They're different things. I can't put them together. 
the biggest thing that we need to recognize for the difference is x and x squared are two different things. x and x squared are not common. They're not like terms. Those are different. Now I realize we just finished up a unit with exponents. I can multiply things like x and x squared together. I can divide x and x squared, but I can't add them. They're different. When you multiply and divide, you can combine things that are different. You can multiply and divide things that are different, but we can't add and subtract them. We have to only group things together that are the same. So as we're looking through, I have a 6. What can I group together with that 6? Negative. negative 6. What's going to happen when I have a 6 and a negative 6? I'm going to get a 0. And you know what, guys? Just so we know where those 6s went, I'm going to write the 0. You don't need to. I'm just putting where the 6s went. They became a 0. All right. Up next, I have a 3y. What can I put together with the 3y? The y. The y. So if I have 3y plus another y, what do I get? Four, Four y's. Okay. Be careful here. Negative 4x, negative x. What's my coefficient for my x? Negative 5. Be careful, guys. If you need to, I know I said we didn't need the graphing calculators anymore this unit. But some of you still might just want those regular plain old calculators just to double check. Things like negative 4 plus another negative 1. All right, and last but not least, we have a 3x squared. Since there's a squared on it, that's different than just a plain x. When we multiplied last unit, yeah, we can multiply those and it worked out just fine. All right, now let's talk standard form. What should come first? 3x squared, followed by the negative 5x, and then our 4y just gets tacked on the end because it's, well, it's a different variable. Standard form's a little trickier if you have more than one variable. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Miss Golly, I got this. I just put together things that are the same, add them together. Yep. Yeah? If this is an addition sign, you add them together. Now, numbers 5 and 6, though, here's where it gets just a little bit trickier. In number 5, we are subtracting. In number 5, we're subtracting. So here's what I recommend you do for something like number 5. Leave whatever's in the first set of parentheses alone. I just recopy it down. It takes me like a second to do. Based on our work last unit, I know for some of you, getting you to show a step, you like to try to erase and rewrite things, just write the step. Don't take the time to erase and go back. Just write the step. Then what I like to do, I like to pretend this is a negative 1 that's in front of those parentheses, and I'm going to do that distribute thing. So I'm going to get a negative 4x. I'm going to get a negative 5y and I'm going to get a positive 2. So everything in that second set of parentheses changes its sign, it becomes its opposite. But I don't try to do that in my head. I write it down so I don't screw up the signs. I think if some of us would have written down a few more steps when it came to doing some of our exponent properties, we would have been better off. Show the step. Now this question becomes just like number four. I just put together the things that are the same. So I've got a 2x and a negative 4x. Be careful with your adding and subtracting. This should be a negative 2x. 3y, negative 5y, negative 2y. Positive 5, positive 2, positive 7. Yeah, positive 7. So if you ever get stuck, picture things like questions one, two, and three. I can only put things together that are the same if you need that visual cue with the pictures. 
watch out for subtraction. So as I move on to number six, I'm going to do my same strategy. That first set of parentheses, there's nothing in front of it. So I'm going to keep it the same. There's nothing in front of it. I'm just going to rewrite it. Now in front of that second set of parentheses, I've got a negative 3. I know it looks like a minus 3. So if you need to change that to plus a negative 3 to show yourself it's a negative 3, that's fine. Distribute the negative 3. Negative 3x squared positive 12x, negative 6. So not only did my signs change, but I also multiplied by 3. Just be careful. I, I don't want to stand up here and take a ton of time to do every single possible kind of example you're going to see. Sometimes when you distribute, there's going to be a negative in front, and sometimes there might be a plus there. So just watch your sign before you distribute. All right, let's put together our common things. We've got a 4x squared and a negative 3x squared. If you want to write the 1, you can. I'll never mark that wrong. I just typically don't write it. You don't need it. It's up to you. I would never mark that wrong, though, on you. Negative 3x, positive 12x, it's going to get us a 9x. Positive 2, negative 6 is going to get us a negative 4. So I know for most of you out there, I know you're grabbing a hold of, yep, okay, Miss Gal, I can only put x's with x's, constants with constants, x squareds with x squareds. Okay, I got it. Watch your signs, though, guys. Otherwise, something that for... Some of you might be like, oh, Miss Golly, this, I'm okay with this. This seems, this seems kind of simple for me. Watch your signs. Those negatives can get you. So to sum this up, you can only combine what we refer to as like terms. Like terms will have the same variable which could mean no variable. Now here's the key part though, with the same exponent. So if I have an x and an x squared like we saw in our last example, I can't put the x squared together with that 9x. It's not gonna magically become like a 10x to the third or anything like that. I can't do that. We add or subtract our coefficients I know this is a big change for us because last unit we were all about changing those exponents, adding them, subtracting them, and multiplying them. But now when we add and subtract, the exponent doesn't change. So make sure, I know it might take a little adjusting to get us to shift gears. Okay, so just be careful on that piece.